Hi, I'm Declan Connolly, founder of Bespoke Home Design, and thank you so much for checking out this 9-step terraced house basic basement execution plan. This execution plan comes with 36 drawings in both PDF and CAD format, which you can download below. The PDFs are for printing right now if you wish, and the CAD files are for editing with a relevant computer program. You also have a list of free computer programs these CAD files work with, and these are listed on the second page of the PDF drawing pack. But before you go ahead and start using those drawings, you need to watch this presentation first, so you can understand what the drawings are all about. This presentation will show you how to make your home a whole lot bigger with a basement conversion. With basements, we tend to have more options when it comes to layout. We can usually have them as open plan as we want, and as a result, it doesn't really matter what your ground floor looks like. Now here we are going through a basic basement layout. There is also an advanced basement execution plan too, but I do urge you to watch this one first, as I cover a lot of design principles here that I will make reference to in the advanced case study. But I'll talk more about that later, as we have a lot to cover in this execution plan. Remember though, you will require planning permission to build a basement. If you're a full Bespoke Home Design Library member, then you have access to the Planning Permission Guideline Report, which goes into how to get planning permission in great detail. And you will need a structural engineer to design the structure for you. We're getting into some pretty serious structural work here, so you might want to check out the Structural Work Guideline Report, which you also have access to if you're a full Bespoke Home Design Library member. And if you're not, then what are you waiting for? The one final thing is that I have simplified the steps in this execution plan to be sequential, so it's easier to understand why we are doing each step. I have omitted some of the construction steps in this execution plan that must be carried out at the start of constructing a basement, like detailed steps on excavation, drainage, utilities, etc. But all those steps are covered in the Basement Conversion Guideline Report. The point of this execution plan is to show you what you can achieve with a basement conversion, rather than get bogged down in the minutia that will be sorted out by a competent building contractor anyway. In other words, we're going straight to the good stuff. Now, before we get going, the first step before you go headlong into putting a basement underneath your home is to make sure you are crystal clear on what you are going to use it for. At the last Grand Designs live show in London, George Clark, who's the guy from the home show and Amazing Spaces on TV, told me a very interesting story. He told me that he had to visit a man's house in Nottingham as part of his show Amazing Spaces, and to his surprise the guy had a pond in his living room. Except it turned out it wasn't a pond. It was in fact the entrance to a massive story-sized aquarium he had built in his basement. And in this aquarium he had stingrays, turtles, catfish and a four-foot alligator garfish. And that's what one of those things looked like. Not many people know this, but George is a bit claustrophobic and he had to get his wetsuit gear on and get into this thing. And here is a picture straight from the Nottingham Post with George in the tank in his scuba gear. And let me repeat, this is Sunblock's basement. And once he was down there, the turtles proceeded to take a fancy to George's toes, and there wasn't much he could do except push his face up into the six inch gap between the water and the underside of the living room floor joists, pleading to get out. Needless to say, he wasn't happy. But the real interesting part of this story is that the guy who owned the house had built all this himself. All the demolition and excavation for the basement, all the structure, the aquarium itself, everything. Now I'm not sure I would be too happy about someone building something like that beside my house, as I'm sure you wouldn't be too keen on it either. But the fact is, the guy knew exactly what he wanted to use his basement for, and it formed the basis of how he built it. And you need to have this clarity too when it comes to your basement. Now, let's get back to this execution plan. To get the most from your basement conversion, we are going to utilise the following five principles. Number one, we are going to design each room in the basement with circulation between each room in mind. Number two, we are going to get as much natural light and ventilation into the basement as we can. Number three, we want to provide a connection to the outdoors at either end of the basement. Number four, we are going to try and make each room multifunctional where possible. And finally, the fifth principle, which is maximising the space in every room. We are going to try and use every square foot of space where possible. So let's get started. Well here is the ground floor of a typical terraced house here in the UK, and for this example we're going to use a terraced house that has already had an extension to the rear of the property. Whether the house has been extended or not actually doesn't matter for the basement layout we're going to cover here. So if your house hasn't got a rear extension don't worry, as it doesn't make a difference whether you have one or not. I'm only using one that has an extension for this example, as around 80% of the terraced house basement jobs I have worked on have had a rear extension. So here is our ground floor. Now this presentation differs from the other terraced house case studies, because we are going to add grid lines to the rest of the slides in this presentation. And the reason for that is because we will be flipping between the ground floor and the basement plans quite a bit. 
And because the basement won't look like the ground floor in a few places, it becomes really easy to get lost and lose your bearings to where we are. So the grid lines help us quickly see where the basement sits in relation to the floor above. Otherwise this presentation will be confusing. To be honest, I still need grid lines and I've been doing this stuff for years. So here is our plan with the grid lines. And you'll notice that we have the numbers 1 to 7 across the top. And the letters A to D along the side. And these grids will help us keep our bearings as we move from the ground floor to the basement and vice versa. Ok, on with the 9 steps. Ok, the first and most important step in all this is to look at what we need to support in the house above the basement. The walls at ground floor will need to be temporarily supported, to allow us to excavate and construct the concrete basement below. You will need a good experienced builder who understands building structure to do this. Your simple handyman or jack of all trades won't cut the mustard here and you'll be putting your property at risk. This is where things start to get serious and never forget that by far the biggest expense when doing any work to your home will be the structural work. You don't want to scrimp here as it is a delicate procedure that must be carried out in a strict sequential manner. So let's start to strip down this drawing and we'll strip it right down to the walls which you can see here and these are the walls we'll need to support. We'll also need to provide some support for the floors too, but I've not shown that for clarity. The temporary support for the most part will not be part of the final basement because it will be chunky, a bit all over the place and won't for the most part tie in with the room layouts. It's all a bit rough and ready, and here's a picture of what this kind of thing looks like. Once the temporary works have been constructed, we then get to step 2 and excavate the soil out of the basement as highlighted in brown between the blue lines and we construct a concrete retaining wall all the way around the perimeter of the house. And here is a screenshot of the concrete basement walls at ground floor level. And this shot is of the basement level itself, with our ground floor walls being temporarily supported over it. This forms the concrete box within which we then put in our basement foundations and floor slab, and within which we put in the rooms and spaces that we want. Now in reality we would also have to put in all the permanent support for the ground floor above and remove the temporary works but for the purposes of clarity I will highlight each part in subsequent steps so you can get a clearer picture on how the basement gets put together. For starters you'll notice that our concrete box juts out for both the front and rear of the house. This is because we want to have a light well each side to get natural light and ventilation into the basement and at ground floor level it kind of looks like this and you can see some grill flooring and a glass floor at each end. The grills let both light and air in and the glass flooring lets in natural light. In step 3 we need to look at how we lay out the front half of the house. So here is a screenshot showing the walls in the ground floor of your terraced house that we will need to support in the basement. And we support the walls and structure above by either building walls underneath them or by providing steel beams supported by steel columns built off the new foundations we have built in step 2. Here is a picture of what the steel beams and columns look like. I'm sure you may or may not have heard of them before. The type of support you use really depends on how open plan you want your basement to be and how you are going to use it. In this example we do a mixture of both. We'll put in new walls underneath most of the walls above towards the front of the house. And this will include constructing a new bay window in the basement to the front of the property to match the bay window in the ground floor. So we're simply putting in the same walls and windows in the basement as we have at the ground floor level. And we'll put in some beams for the rest. We'll hide the beams for clarity so we can better see what we are doing. And we do all this to form a usable room to the front of the house. In step 4 we can also pinch some space underneath the main entrance and we can build a new bathroom here in this space. It won't detract from the light well as we need to have an entrance to the ground floor of the house anyway. You could also put in some opaque glass blocks overhead in the entrance to the house so you get some natural light in without compromising on privacy. After we have created the new bathroom we can then in step 5 Use the adjacent space as an extra bedroom for guests or a private living room or whatever you want really. You could also use it as a self-contained flat and I'll talk more about that later as there are some extra steps needed to achieve that. Or we can use that space for something else. So in this example we'll keep the front room simple and use it as a guest room. In step 6 we come to the middle of the basement. And here is a screenshot at ground floor levels of the walls we need to support either with new walls below or with steel beams. And here are the walls superimposed into our basement. Can you see how handy the grid lines make this? Let's go again but keep your eyes on the grid lines. Here's the ground floor and here we are in the basement. However this area is the darkest part of the whole basement as we have no real natural light coming in either side. We could of course create a courtyard down to the basement too and I'll show you how to do that as part of the self contained flat example in the advanced basement execution plan. But for now we can use this area for some functional if not spectacular spaces. So it makes a perfect place for a utility room and storage space with a toilet beside it. 
This would, incidentally, also make the ideal place for a recording studio or practice room. I used to be a drummer in a rock band, so this would be a great place for me to play my drums. In step 7, we'll need to put in some stairs so we can get down to the basement, and we'll simply copy what is done at the ground floor and put in a similar stairs with storage underneath it. You could also put a toilet here if you preferred, and use the toilet space from the previous step for something else if you wished. The great thing about basements is that they have a lot of freedom to arrange the spaces the way you want, without being restricted like we are as we go up to the ground and first floors above. And finally we come to the back of the property, and here we can see what we need to support from the ground floor above, and here they are superimposed over the basement. So in step 8 we will firstly build the end walls in a similar way to the ground floor, and here they are in blue. Then we build some steel beams to pick up the walls above, and finally we put in similar fallback doors as to what the ground floor has. I've just removed the beams for clarity. These fallback doors can be up and out and you can walk out into the light well. We could also add some stairs to access the rear garden, but we leave it out for this example. And finally, in step 9, we'll furnish the rear of the property. It could be a movie room, TV room, gym, office, study, playroom, whatever you want really. But in this example, we're going to make it a cool living space. And this is what a basic basement conversion looks like under a ground floor extended terraced house. So here is the original ground floor. And here is what it looks like with a basement underneath. And here again is our finished basement. But we don't have to stop here. There is also an advanced basement layout where we extend the basement out underneath the rear garden, and we put together a separate execution plan for that. It also covers how to plan out a self-contained flat which has specific requirements if you want to build one. And it covers how to put a basement underneath a house that hasn't got a ground floor extension. With that said, I hope I've given you some ideas in this presentation. There are of course other things we can do with the house to make it bigger, such as tweak the layout of both the ground and first floors to unlock a load of space that's currently going to waste. We could do a ground floor extension if you haven't done one already, or even a loft conversion. And we have an execution plan for each of them too in the Bespoke Home Design Library, so make sure to check them out. And remember that if you have any questions or comments, then please post them in the Bespoke Home Design Brain Trust group on Facebook. And don't forget, if there is a topic you would like us to create an execution plan for then, also let us know. And finally, there's a lot more stuff here in your membership area to check out, and I hope you get a lot of value from it. I'll see you in the next video.